Got the work boots on today. My jeans all dirty in the back? For you soft tail lovers, I got a good one right behind me. It's a 2019 FXDRS. It was one of the coolest soft tails that my book Harley had out. Limited bike, only made it in 2019 and 20. FXDR, the DR stands for drag race. It's a drag race inspired soft tail from Harley Davidson. What Harley did for the FXDR, slim tail, massive 240 rear tire. The cool stuff they did on the front is a really sport cowl around the headlight. It's aerodynamic, it looks good, it fits well. Inverted fork, but it's one of the only bikes Harley has with clip-ons. So it's an aluminum clip-on handlebar right from Harley Davidson when these guys were new. This is one that customer sent to us with his son's bike. We're doing two big builds for them. This got our moonshine horsepower, 139 cubic inch nightmare setup. It is an over square motor, big piston, short stroke. So the combination for our 139, because there's all kinds of different ways to get there. We do a four and a half inch big boy piston and we use the 107 stroke flywheels. It's a four. 0.375 inch stroke flywheel. These are RPM rippers. They want 7,500 RPMs. They're awesome. Now, when we build a soft tail, it is rigid mounted in the frame. The engine is rigid mounted in the frame. So we have to retain the balancers inside of the engine case. And on soft tails, they have two. They have a front balancer and a rear balancer. What we do to offset the two balancers spinning in the case we lighten the flywheel as much as possible while retaining the extra weight of the balancers on a soft tail Milwaukee 8 setup. So just like all of our big builds, this guy starts off as a case bore. It gets our big case bore, which requires the four and a half inch monster cylinders we make. These are our cylinders. On this one, they're not just the monsters. This is a pair of our CNC game changer MHP cylinders. So these are actually CNC cylinders. We are testing out some black anodized. We wanna see how they hold up. They look beautiful. Um, the heads are painted, they're completely blacked out. Anodized jugs, that's something we have to do before we actually sleeve them. They look beautiful on there. We just wanna make sure that the hard anodized is able to retain its color after she heats up and cools down. Takes the abuse of the sun out there, so. MHP CNC Game Changer Cylinders, anodized black. It's got a pair of our monster heads on it, which these are gonna be the plus 2.5 millimeter oversized valves. They are titanium with Inconel exhaust. They run our big square port intake runner. So when you're running the same RPMs as a motor with a four and a half inch stroke, the piston doesn't have to travel as far down to go back up in the same RPMs. So your piston speed is reduced which it's easier on the rings allowing them to seal. And if I had to pick between bore and stroke, I'm always picking bore over stroke. The reason being is we're always limited by how big around your cylinder is. The size of it, the larger I make it, the more I'm unshrouding the intake valves of the head so it actually improves the flow of your head. Take the same head, put it on a smaller size bore, a lot of times you'll see your flow numbers go down. We want all the air we can get in. Having a larger piston, a larger cylinder bore allows more air in faster than a smaller bore with a longer stroke. Plus having the ring speed slow down because this piston's moving slower with a shorter stroke, it's a benefit. And then we got it paired with a 70 millimeter monster manifold that is our manifold done with Frankenstein engine dynamics and a 70 millimeter throttle body on this bad boy. We are running our Moonshine Horsepower 610 cam. It's not a cam we do a lot, but when we're doing a lot of cubic inch, the more air in, the more air out. We don't have a lot of really big exhaust pipes that will lean with a fat tire soft tail and not scrape the ground too much. So we couldn't go to like a Burns new soft tail or their low rider S pipe, which we'd love to have on this. 
we would make probably about 10 more horsepower with that exhaust on this bike. But we want to keep the ground clearance up. He rips, takes the corners. We're going to sacrifice some overall horsepower for a really good torque number and for throttle response a little sooner with the smaller pipe. But the pipe is limiting the output of this bike. It is a thrashing two-in-one anti-reversion pipe. Awesome pipe. You're not limiting yourself with 114 cubic inch, 128, but we start going over 131 cubic inch. We want a little bigger exhaust pipe. And with this being a 139, it, it really needs a little bit more. But what this exhaust is gonna do on this motor build is riding RPMs on the street, you know, your 2300 to 4000, it's gonna feel super crisp, super responsive. I wanna break down the suspension we chose for this build, and of course, the carbon fiber BST wheels. So we went with the five spoke carbon fiber wheel from BST, front and rear. Several years ago, we needed the wider rear wheel setup from BST for the 240 setup. So we were working on a fat boy back then. We broke the fat boy down during winter time, put it on a stand, sent the stock Harley Davidson wheel to BST. About six months later, carbon fiber 240 wheel showed up. We were in business. So same setup we were doing from them. We have it on the rear. When you have a lot of tire, the wider the tire you go, the heavier it is. So we're trying to offset some of that mass. The wheel that comes factory on an FXDR is a solid wheel. It's a lot of mass. Putting this carbon fiber wheel on, you're gonna feel it when you take off. You're gonna feel it when you stop. When you get in the corners, lean the bike up and down, it's gonna be a noticeable difference. So front and rear carbon fibers. The front end of this got an Olin's cartridge kit. This is their NIX 30 cartridge kit. So on the cartridge kit, just like when we do the Olin's inverted fork, the whole fork itself, you're gonna have your preloads on both forks. Preload is gonna be your normal six head bolt. You're gonna grab it with a wrench. And when you adjust your right, you're gonna adjust the left. You're gonna preload on both the same. The difference is one side's gonna run compression. On this bike, we have the left side on compression. That's gonna be your inner screw. That's gonna adjust your comp compression. On the right side, you got your rebound. Inner screw here works to rebound. So it is a Showa inverted fork with the Olin's NIX 30 cartridge kit installed into them. It's gonna be a plusher ride, full adjustability, a lot of tuning with that setup so you can dial in your motorcycle. On the rear, we also went with Olin's right underneath my right leg here. You have your adjuster. What this is doing is this is operating your compression for the HD 503 rear shock. It is a mono shock on the soft tail. Um, I gotta take the seat off and everything so you can see it, but you have the same exact settings on this rear shock as we have on the front forks. You're gonna have a preload, which is gonna be collars on the shock to put preload onto the spring. And then you're also gonna have rebound, which is on the bottom of the shock with a black collar. Fully tunable, adjustable suspension. And then to finish her off, a back cut transmission. Just allows the gears to go into gear quicker. When you back cut them, as soon as the, the dogs touch each other, it pulls them into gear. It is a quicker shifting transmission with back cut dogs on the transmission. So this guy, 160 foot pounds of torque. We're making max torque at 4,200 RPMs. Okay, max horsepower on this build with this huge 240 rear setup is 169 horsepower. We're making that at 6,700 RPMs. So bike from, man, from 35 on is a complete beast. With a short pipe on a soft tail, you're always gonna have that slighter dip because it's just a shorter exhaust. And we usually don't make as much horsepower with a soft tail as we would a touring bike. Several reasons. We need exhaust volume. The second reason is we have two balancers inside the motor swinging, which is putting those balancers through oil. There's more weight, more precipitating mass there as well. So little different graphs on soft tails than on touring bikes, but impressive bike to ride. This thing is a complete monster. Even though it doesn't say 180 horsepower, being a couple hundred pounds lighter, it'll run down those 180 horsepower baggers pretty easily. All right, 
The favorite part, the only reason you watch this whole video. <laughs> Job's good. They need to duplicate this on like a, a low rider or maybe. Come on, Harley, put this on a new Rogue Glide S for us. Look at this paint. Just duplicate that with that pinstripe and that gray. Woo! We'll sell them all, I promise. Okay, this is really cool too. Anytime we have the HD1 from Harley Davidson on the paint, all the customers, all the riders are saying, hey, we love the one. Bring it out, put it on the bike. Now, the customer, before we got this bike, did some touches. He's got some Rizoma lights on the rear. He's moved his tag to the side with the Rizoma set up as well. But just an amazing, cool bike. If you're looking for a second bike and you can find one of these FXDRs in good shape, I highly recommend you buying one. It's just a, a great in-town bike. It'll surprise you, even though it has the really wide 240 tire, it is a very good handling and turning bike. Is it the best? No, but it's kind of like the Ducati Diablo that came out with the wide rear tire, and it's one of the best cornering bikes that Ducati has. This bike as well will rip, and it's the angle of the fork, the whole setup on the front. The geometry of this bike is just really well put together and designed from Harley. I wish they kept it out a little longer. Come on, Harley, two years, that's it? So of course, some of the finishing touches when we do a, a Full engine build, the customer gets to pick out what they want. We match the pinstripe the best we could with powder coat. The lower rocker boxes are powder coated to match the push rod tube collars and the SNS ring, which this is actually a moonshine horsepower ring that we powder coated to match as well. A couple touches. It is the SNS Cycles carbon fiber stealth teardrop, and it is the SNS one inch over stealth air cleaner setup. 